Welcome to It's All About the Questions, where learning to ask the right questions can help you achieve a lifelong success. Now, here to help you ask all the right questions is award-winning author, international speaker, and business strategist, Laura Stewart. Good morning, afternoon, and evening, everyone. And it's such a joy to be here today, even if Sean was laughing at me when I got down off of my uh, this chair in the studio and couldn't get back up because of the broken foot and the wrist and the in the splint, I just couldn't move. And it, I was laughing at myself, and Sean was laughing at me too. So that is a great way to start the show is just in laughter um, because I'm laughing at myself just as much. Anyway, I have a great show for you guys today. Um, it was a show that was supposed to happen in November, and because I messed up the days, um, I did. Um, I wrote Tuesday to my guests, but put the wrong date so we were both all confused and um, ended up that Sean Murphy aka Taylor Anderson ended up doing the show with me so that was really awesome and we talked a lot about um, about Yuri and Jody uh, during that particular show and their book Ready Set Achieve a guide to taking charge of your life creating balance and achieving your goals so it's really a joy to, to have uh, Yuri Diogenes and, and Jody Miller finally on the show because of my mistake. <laughs> See, nobody's perfect, and you just kind of have to get over that you're not perfect, unless you are, and then let me know because I'd love to have you on the show. Um, but what I love about having Yuri and Jody on the show is how they truly have done life changing things for themselves and for other people. Um, Yuri, Jody, you're both on the line? Yes. Yeah. Okay, I'm great. Here. I'm glad to be here. <laughs> Thanks for having us. Yeah, it's it's so cool to have you on here. Now, Yuri, you and I, quote unquote, met when yes. I did a keynote, a webinar keynote at uh, Microsoft for the, the technical group that you are a writer for. And right. I have to tell you, I, I read your book. It's completely, yours and Jody's book, it's completely dog eared because there's so many really cool um, concepts and ideas and easy to do things right that break things down sort of like the slight edge philosophy that i that jeff olson and john david mann wrote about in the book slight edge and i i want to thank you because you talked about me in this book and the most powerful thing is to be told that you've helped change somebody or shift somebody and when i read i didn't know you had written about me in your book and uh, i just want to thank you for that because what you wrote really um, made me cry. So thank oh. you so much. It was... No, thank you. I mean, it was a, a very enlightening presentation that I watched from you on that day. And uh, when you you keep asking the why, and we never realized the why of things. And and when you your entire presentation was around the why, and it seems like so obvious, but when you start to you know, go through the whys of everything, you start making sense of things. I'm like, wow, that's very powerful. Well, and knowing the, what you went through, that to me makes it even more impactful that it hits you so much about the why because you went from, now you're a technical guy like me. We're, we're geeks. Um, we're both, you know, I was a technical writer. You're a technical writer. You've written tons of technical books. You, you get geekdom. You embrace it fully and completely. And, and you went from being that typical geek guy who weighs over 300 pounds, eats nothing but junk food, and in a year, you transformed yourself with others' help, like Jody, to become, you know, a champion U.S. bodybuilder with, like, yeah, zero uh, body fat. I mean, I look at the pictures of you, the before and afters in this book, and, and I'm sitting here going, okay, I've just lost 20 pounds since June, so I'm very excited about that. Um, but it's, how do you do that? <laughs> it's, uh, it, it's really, it was almost like a click to me because at the time that I decided to change, it was because of health issues. I was really dealing with health problems. And at some point my doctor said, well, if you continue that road, you're not going to last long. So you better make a change. And, uh, when I thought about change, I couldn't do or diet or a seasonal diet to lose some weight uh, because that doesn't really work. Your weight will come back and uh, you're going to be obese again. So I have to shift my mindset to say I need to change my lifestyle. And I need to do something that will last forever. 
and and honestly, we 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 never do things on our own. We need to be uh, with with coaches, with friends, and with uh, a network of people that really uh, help you to go through those moments. And and uh, Jody and and Greg, my my first coach, they had uh, a great participation on that. That's why when I talked to Jody about the book, I I really wanted her to be part of this because of her own. Uh, story on background on nutrition on on background on education she was a teacher and uh it just aggregates so much value to the book and uh it was it was really almost like a a, a log daily log to me uh doing this uh the initial draft for the book so when i talked to do it about it i already had some um uh, blueprint of what I had in mind, and she aggregates a lot of value. It was just a, a perfect partnership, in my opinion, and, and she can comment on that as well. And now, now, Jody, your background, to me, is pretty intense. I mean, you're a University of Texas Austin graduate, you've been a teacher, you um, won multiple bodybuilding championships, Team Universe, and You've participated in world championships in Spain. You were in Ms. Natural Olympia title. I mean, that's not something that just happens overnight. Uh, I Reading through the book about your journey, what drove you to get to where you're at now? Wow. Um, my, my parents have always said I'm stubborn. <laughs> <laughs> I had a boss that said I'm I'm like a bulldog um, whenever I have a task or a goal. Um, I don't think she meant it as a compliment, <laughs> but I took it as one. <laughs> um, I just, when I get something in my head and I really want to achieve it, I just don't let go of it. And um, uh, I think when, when I started out, competing isn't like teaching. Teaching, I felt, was that's in my blood. That's something that, of course, there's a million techniques and, and things that I needed to learn, uh, mostly on the job while I was doing it, which is always fun. Um, but uh, um, it, it, teaching, really, that was something that was truly intrinsic in me and shaping my body so that it met this um, subjective uh, criteria that is laid out for us from from the organization that we're in, that I had to work very, very hard. I had to overcome um, genetics and my shape and, and uh, really fight over the years and be patient. Um, and I have, I definitely have a lot of patience except when I'm in traffic. And, um, and so I think the patience, the stubbornness, and just the desire I really wanted to achieve something that was different. When I first began competing, um, it was very, very rare. I think now it's it's very prevalent. Um, uh, it's it's quite uh, common to walk into a gym and meet somebody who is getting ready for a competition. But when I began um, in the late 90s, n- nobody was doing it. It was so rare. It was rare for a woman to have muscle. Very rare. Well, and so, you and know, I, and that appealed to me. I look at the pictures of you, um, both on on web, Twitter profiles, you know, all over social media and and in the book. And, you know, I I look at you and I look at Yuri and I go, this is an amazing pairing because the two of you are not, let's use your word, stubborn. I I wouldn't say that either one of you is stubborn. I would say that you're, you're tenacious in your belief structure of what you both have the ability to do. And you want to help others find that in themselves. And that's a huge thing. It's not something that everybody can do. Now, Yuri, going, losing 100 pounds and becoming a competitive bodybuilder, that takes tenacity. And it takes a faith in yourself, but yet you did it while still, well, actually not still, but becoming a greater part of your family at the same time. Yes, I think that the key for me was to do something that wouldn't compromise my core uh, values and, and, and my core activities. 
the work that I do at Microsoft and my family, the time that I need to be with them. So I will be very honest to say that the first three months of changing was very drastic because I was a guy that was used to eat junk food all day long. I was probably eating 6,000 calories a day, 5,000 just on, you know, McDonald's and things like that, and went down to eat 1,800 calories a day. So you can imagine how I was feeling. It was almost like an addiction. I, I, at the first week, I was shaking, missing the food, craving for the, the sweet. It was pretty uh, intense. Uh, and uh, at some point, my wife said, oh, I think you should stop this, this diet because you, you're really going, going crazy and uh, I'm not sure if you should do that. That's, why, that's when I, I thought to myself, well, if I, I need to go through this and all the pain and all the, the struggle, I need to hold on to myself because I don't want to affect them. I don't want to you know, uh, go out for dinner and uh, make them feel bad because they are eating good and I'm not eating very well. So it was a conscious change trying to isolate and, and not affect the people around me. And, and that also helped me to uh, prepare myself for making sure that this was not a seasonal change. And, and now, uh, five years later, because I started this change in 2011, five years later, I can sustain my body. I, I keep working towards uh, making better in, in improvements. And, and my life changed completely, not only phys physically, but mentally. Uh, during the time that I was changing, I, I did my master's degree in cybersecurity. I wrote uh, m more books. I'm, I'm down to 17 books right now. My latest book was released uh, this year uh, about Azure security, and I'm already writing the next one that will be released next year. So it's a nonstop uh, time, and I'm also a professor at the AC Council University for the Master in Cybersecurity program. So it's a busy agenda, but once you incorporate all the chains in your lifestyle, things get way easier because you know that you're going to have to eat that every three hours, you know what you're going to eat. You look at uh, the food that you're going to eat. You are more, co more conscious about the, the things that you choose because at the end of the day, you do have control what what you're going to eat. No, nobody is forcing you to eat junk food. It's, it's you doing it, right? So when you get conscious choices about eating, uh, things really uh, change. Well, what now, is now this, is, this is a live show, so I just want to clarify one thing. I cannot hear Jody talking, so is that normal? <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, I'm going to have, um, I'm gonna have Sean um, check, on, check on that. Sometime, sometimes we do have difficulty when there's two lines coming in um, with the other person on the phone not being able to hear, so we'll, we'll work on, on that. So, Sean, can you take a look at that for me? He's working on that. So, um, all right, thank you. All right, so... Talking about what you were just talking about, you know, with the the mindset stuff and the planning, um, you know, like you don't you don't have to eat junk food, right? We choose to eat junk food, but mm -hmm. for a lot of people, and Jody, um, you feel free to chime in on this as well. You know, one of my biggest struggles is planning my meals, and right. it's getting even harder with I'm one handed and I can't go grocery shopping, so I have to rely on other people to help me go do all that stuff. I think the planning is beyond the food, right? So the planning is you're setting a goal, both of you, for your lives of what you want. And fitness has become a big part of it. But it sounds like fitness has enabled you to improve other areas of your life as well because the the focus. So, Jody, how do you help yourself focus? And, and what tip can you give to my listeners to enable them to achieve by using focus? The first thing is to actually understand, set your goal and understand what the motivation is behind that goal. Um, I, I tell my clients this. I tell other competitors this, um, friends. Um, a lot of times uh, if, if somebody tells me that they don't, they don't have that focus or they can't seem to get things together, I'll ask them, why are you doing it? Like what, what is pushing you? What is motivating you? And you have to get down to that root uh, 
cause of that motivation. And if it could be that maybe that motivation isn't strong enough and you have to dig a little deeper and reconfigure what that motivation is. Um, so if you want it badly enough, then you'll do what needs to be done in order to achieve it within reason, of course. Okay. So that's the very first step. The first step is digging down deep for your motivation. Yuri, were you able to hear Jody that time? Uh, no. No. Okay. But so I, sh- I'm, I'm pretty and sure I have a uh, good idea what no. you said. Okay. So uh, we are very well in sync on that. <laughs> okay. Sean's, Sean's working on it some more. So, <laughs> Jody, you said digging deep for the motivation. So it sounds a lot like my why question that I talk about in my book and in my speaking and even on this show a lot. Is there a particular question that you like to use to help your clients dig for that why for that motivation for them to keep them going I just go through I kind of I, I listen to them and I just keep asking a, a, a lot of times I just keep ask, I keep asking why I treat it very similarly as I did when I would try to get students to back up their opinions regarding uh, a piece of literature uh, when they were explaining a character and I would just continue to ask why um, and oh, now I have feedback I have my voice coming back to me okay now, well, I, you know, now I can hear Jody okay so now you can hear Jody but now Jody has feedback and she can hear her echo okay we're gonna have to work with it it's live radio that that's how it works and at the national news break at 11 30 we can try to clean up some of that stuff so all right so so Yuri we talked about motivation and we talked a little bit about um focus right Mm -hmm. why is it that you feel planning is so important uh my my coach tells me that i'm a a, a, a freak a plan freak because i like to plan way ahead i just think that it i know that life you you really cannot you think you can control, but you really can't because there are so many things that will happen uh, that will take you out of your course. But planning at least helps you to set some guidelines and, and even mitigate potential issues that you might face down the road. So you always have the, the when you're planning, you always say, well, if something happened, here's the plan B or here is what I should do work around that. So I feel like planning is very important. And probably that comes back to my uh, my years working with technology, because when you are uh, deploying a new technology, you are doing some kind of migration or implementing something. Planning is a big part of implementing. If you do not plan correctly, the implementation is going to uh, you're going to suffer through the implementation because you didn't plan some of the scenarios, some things that you should have thought about you did it and uh, it was just going to be hard right so I, I i brought that entire background of years of consultant uh, and uh in technology to uh my lifestyle and i thought well it's very important for me to when i go out i go a lot to redmond uh, for a business trip i already know which hotel i'm going to stay in this hotel is very close to a gym that way i can go to the gym every day I when I I mean well right when I'm West Coast I keep my time zone which is Central Time so which means I, at 3 a.m. I'm gonna wake up 3 a.m. which is 5 a.m. in Texas and uh, I'm going to the gym 3 a.m. and people are like man you're crazy 3 a.m. in the gym well it's not 3 a.m. my body says it's 5 a.m. so I'm just gonna use you know keep my normal routine so I plan all that ahead and 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 for after five years doing that I just think that is that that's the most important part of your uh, changing, your transformation, is really have a good planning to achieve things. Uh, without, if I don't plan, I'm, I'm certainly I will fail. And planning your your meals to me is vital. When I travel, what I do is I ship my meals to the hotel because I'm not going to have time to cook. I I don't cook. My wife does. <laughs> and. Uh, <laughs> And if I go out to eat in a restaurant, chances are that I'm going to eat something that I was not supposed to eat. So when I order my food and I ship to the hotel, I know exactly what I'm going to eat. 
What kind of food uh, are you shipping to the hotel? Something your wife cooked or something from somewhere no, else? No, no. There is a website that I use, uh, a company here from Texas that I use. Uh, and uh, you, you say exactly uh, the amount of protein, the amount of carbohydrates, everything. is, is pretty, pretty awesome. Uh, okay, what's the name of the company? <laughs> the I- Icon Meals. Icon. That's the one that I iconmills.com. Okay. Okay. Yeah, and uh, it's it's great and it's cheap. Uh, so you don't you never overeat because they give you exactly the macronutrients that you chose during uh, the time that you place the order. So that way I have I carry my food and I know what I'm gonna eat. So that's all part of planning to me. Uh, and and without this, you know, spending some hours prior to your trip to plan what you're going to do throughout the week, it's really hard to accomplish because you, you do not have those things to, you know, check mark, done that, done that, done that, now next move on. Well, many people can do planning when everything seems to be going okay. But as oh, yeah, soon as there's true. some sort of hiccup, like me when I broke my foot, my wrist, my mom's in Health South getting care, um, Planning seems to go out the window because your schedule is no longer your own. How do you and Jody rebound from crisis mode to keep to what you're trying to do? Or is it just now you just do it? You don't even think twice about it? Well, in my case, uh, when I do have those roadblocks, I try to stay as close as possible to... Uh, my my plan. I know that I might skip uh, some stuff, but I'll try to compensate. And also, you you uh, there is something that Tony Robbins said one in one of his presentations that I watch. It's very important. One of his quotes that what he says: "Have a plan. Uh, uh, be focused on your plan, but also be flexible to it." And I think flexibility is very important. You you cannot be too pick and say, well, if it doesn't happen this way, I'm not going to do it, right? You you have to have flexibility. And on this flexibility, it doesn't mean that you're going to fall apart. It means that you're going to try to adjust, right? So the flexibility is not an excuse to not do it. It's more of an excuse to say, okay, now that this happened, how I can still accomplish my goal with this roadblock in front of me? So you just need to look for alternatives. Like when I went to uh, Paris last year, I remember it was funny because I, I, the hotel, I thought that it, there was a gin in the hotel. I needed to have it. And there was no gin around there. And, uh, well, it's going to be one week without training. Probably not. I know that I'm going to walk a lot, so the cardio is, is done. What I've done it was I wake up every day, 5 a.m., and I've done 200 push-ups, you know, uh, just to do something, right? I'm not going to be doing nothing. So try to adjust. I try to make some change, but have that uh, feeling of accomplishment. Well, I couldn't do the way I want to do it, but I've done anyway the best of my abilities. So it sounds like you're saying give yourself a break. Things happen, sometimes out of your control, but don't use it as an excuse to just forget about your plan. Exactly, exactly. Okay. Um, Jody, your, your thoughts on this topic? Um, and sorry, I still can't hear Yuri, so hopefully I'm not okay. repeating. That's okay. It's still said. your perspective. Um, but my perspective is, one, practice making everything a habit so that when things become really tough, this is your um, your stability factor. This is what um, you depend upon, and, and you keep it steady, you keep it stable and consistent, even when everything else is going awry. Um, it's almost like setting the alarm clock and getting up at the same time every morning um, in, in order to keep a, a schedule, and that's your consistency. Um, so if, if you're practicing eating six meals a day, continue to do that until it becomes like the back of your hands so that then when things do fall apart, you're still in that habit. Um, like I'm thinking Yuri said, don't beat yourself up if you do mess up or if something happens and you can't do something exactly the way that you were doing it before. Okay, perfect. We're going to go into our national news break and we'll be back with more from Yuri Diogenes and Jody Miller. Ready, set, achieve. We'll be right back after the national news. Success comes from not only what you know, but also who you know. 
Welcome back to It's All About the Questions with award-winning author Laura Stewart. All right, welcome back, everybody. And if you are just joining us for the second half of the show, we are here with my guests, Yuri Diogenes and Jody Miller, authors of Ready, Set, Achieve, a guide to taking charge of your life, creating balance, and achieving your goals. We've been talking about planning uh, just before we went into the national news break. But, you know, Yuri, I was just reading over yours and Jody's um, biographies again. And, you know, you started your lifestyle change in 2011. In the first year, you lost 100 pounds by following a specific nutrition training program, but most of all, by changing your mindset to focus on balance in your life. You and Jody wrote in your book, and I, I dog-eared this page because I just thought it was so important to, to talk about. When one's social existence becomes neglected, it creates a domino effect that triggers depression, anxiety, rising cortisol levels due to little or no stress relief, and a loss of focus in one's goals for the workplace and health arena. Why did you feel it was so important to put this in your book? Um, well, for me, the, the stress of my professional when I was uh, dealing with uh, high critical cases was very high, right? I... I was the last, uh, the last level of escalation uh, for uh, the technology that I used to work with back in 2008, 9, 10, which were really the peak years of my obesity. And uh, my cortisol level was very high. And since I started this change, I've been monitoring, doing blood tests all the time, I mean, every, every quarter. And my doctor told me one day, he said, what have you done? Because your cortisol level, it seems like uh, someone's uh, stress-free. And I know you work with technology, so that really doesn't make too much sense to be stress-free. I, I say, well, to me, it was really balance. is is really trying to equalize things. It really turn off uh, by the end of the day when you finish work, turn it off, and then do something completely different. And one of the things that I've done differently, besides the change, of, uh, the physical change, was also pursue hobbies, doing all things that I always wanted to do but didn't have time and didn't have the energy. So uh, physical activity enabled me to do other things besides uh, be more focused and, 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 and even uh, more active at work, but also enabled me to have more energy to do other things. So... My daughter, uh, she is eight years old, and she plays drums, and I play drums. So we play drums together. We, we rehearse together. Uh, we attend uh, a school of rock here in Texas. It's just amazing because it's something completely different from what I do on my daily basis. And, and that's really release, make you relax, right? And, and I think it's important that people realize that. You cannot be all in in one thing 100% of the time because it, it probably will drive you crazy. It's like if you are uh, uh, someone that uh, lives all day doing the same thing in and out, you're going to get stressed, even if that thing that you do is something that you love doing. But you really have to pursue other things and keep that balance. And Jody has a very interesting story about that. I, I think that, that particular paragraph, she did, she, she did uh, write that one so she can... Uh, add more on that. Great. So, Jody, um, Yuri was just talking about you have this really great story about balance from the chapter I read about the social. And I, I loved how Yuri talked about you can be totally all in on one thing, but that can be very stressful, how you need to balance that out because you really can't be a thousand percent in to one thing. You have to have something else you're doing to enable that that balance so what is it for you that caused that made you feel this was so critical to have in this book jody are you there okay it appears we may have lost jody for a moment there um so sean is going to try well we've we've got you but um yuri so all right, let's talk a little bit further. So you said that Jody has a great story around this, but yeah. well, what is it? And when she's back, she can talk about she that. She can talk about that. Yeah. Um, you said you drum with your daughter. Mm -hmm. Are they doing things that you love to do as well? 
in terms of the, the working out, the food? How does that work in your family? Because there are a lot of people out there that want to do something like maybe they want to get physically fit, but they get a lot of sabotage from family members or loved ones to yeah. not help have them do that. How did do you deal with that inside your family? Well, my, my, my wife, she, uh, she was a very great uh, help on that because she em- embraced the change. And uh, she also lost weight because when she got pregnant, she, she really gained a lot of weight. And, and, and through, through all those five, the past five years, she also got fit. Uh, she is not so uh, precise as, as I am with the macronutrients and things like that. But she changed her, her eating habits to uh, eating more cautious and, and making the right choices. And that really changed her body and, and and made her feel better. So I think that from that perspective, it was pretty easy. For my daughters, I mean, I have a teenager, 17 years old. Uh, they can eat everything, and they still burn calories. It's amazing. So it's, it's the same thing for my years, eight years old. She is very active, and uh, she eats uh reasonable well she she likes uh, some vegetable but she also uh, eats candy i mean it's not a big deal because i as i keep saying it's once you change your your mentality you don't really feel uh tempted to cheat right i mean my wife, my daughter is eating uh, a pizza of, uh, a pizza at home and if that day is not my cheating meal day i would just walk by smell it and say, wow, that, sound, that looks nice, and that's it. I'm not going to feel like, wow, I have to eat that. It's right there, you know. Because it sounds like because what Judy, Jody talked about, you it's now become your habit. Yes, yes, it is. Okay, Jody, are, can you hear me now, Jody? Yes, I can hear you, and I can hear Yuri, too. Are you okay. able to hear me? Awesome. Sean is giving, like, all sorts of high signs, thumbs up. Yay! Yay. <laughs> okay, so um, we were just talking about how do you deal with potential sabotage it sounds like that Yuri has a family that's really supportive but um which is wonderful and he's worked into the habit but before that he said you have a a great story to talk about and we have three minutes before we go to the news break um about that chapter in the book the, the section of the book about social and how it builds to to stress and high cortisol levels why did you feel that was so critical to the book Well, I felt that that was extremely critical because um, when I began competing, I was teaching, and uh, teachers uh, work a ton of hours. We work 24-7, basically, and all that I had time for was teaching, grading papers, and working out. I was up at 4.30 in the morning. I was in bed by 12.30 at midnight, 1 o'clock in the morning, not much sleep. I didn't, I just didn't do anything else, and... I achieved all the goals that I set out to achieve, but I was also really, really unhappy. Um, I had built this cocoon for myself and had gotten in the habit of that. Um, And in the past several years, I've learned that actually you have to open yourself up um, to others around you. I think keeping those personal connections, um, keeping your hobbies in place, um, that are outside of some of the major goals that you have set forth, they keep you human. They keep you well-rounded. You uh, gain perspective that you didn't have before. Um, you are able to better succeed because you are happier. You're more positive. You don't see yourself as simply, oh, my gosh, I, I have to do this, and then I have to do this, and then I have to do this, and I never have time for me. So I tell all of my clients and my friends um, that it is an extremely important to uh, schedule in time for yourself and to do things that you that that tap into other elements of what makes you you. And it may take you a little bit longer to reach your goal, but you're going to be much happier, and the people around you are going to be happier as you walk that path. So it's. Put your oxygen mask on first. <laughs> yes, 
Actually, yes, it is extremely important because uh, a, a lot of my clients are women in their um, 30s and 40s, and, and many of them have kids or, or husbands and, and or both. Um, and it, it's so important that I, I say to them, you have to take care of you. I remember when my grandmother was in her final weeks, and it was very, very unexpected, and I'm an only grandchild, so I was extremely close to her. And I, I was still going to the gym, and I remember feeling really guilty about that, that I, I'm i going to the gym, I'm living my life, and there she is laying in the hospital hospital bed, and she can't, she doesn't have that freedom, and I, I just gave myself such a guilt trip about it. And it took me a long time to realize that that's not a bad thing. If I'm going to go, and I'm going to eat, and I'm going to take care of myself, and I'm going to shower, and, and do my hair, and... and get and get into the gym and go to work and do the things that make me who I am, then I can be much better for her. I can be more patient. I can be more um, giving, more caretaking, more nurturing because I feel more at ease. And And we're going to go to commercial break on that because this is a really important topic and I want to make sure we can fully cover. We'll be right back with more from Perry Diogenes and Jody Miller. Success comes from not only what you know, but also who you know. Welcome back to It's All About the Questions with award-winning author Laura Stewart. A number of people have asked me why I say success comes from not only what you know, but who you know. And this show and, and all of my shows are the reasons why I think that's so important. People like Yuri and Jody help you shift your perspectives and just ask yourself, different questions. Their book has so many amazing questions to ask yourself in it. I highly recommend everybody get Ready, Set, Achieve, a guide to taking charge of your life, creating balance and achieving goals. It's available on Amazon and wherever books are sold. Um, Jody, you were talking about this concept, which I struggle with every day because I caregive for my mom full time for the last five years. And the two falls I took that broke my my foot and, and put my wrist in a cast, um, made me realize how much I was not taking care of myself, but how much guilt over what if something happened to mom when I was taking care of myself instead of her. So what, talk a little bit more about this mindset shift that you had um, while your grandma was in the hospital. Well, I I think it came later on. It was something that I I went to the gym, and I even, when my my mom and I went up to Chicago um, for uh, her funeral, um, and we were up there for two weeks, and it was a blizzard, and I was still going to the gym. I remember my mom going, you're going to go to the gym. And I said, yeah, I mean, it's just, it's like eating breakfast. It's what I do. And it's how I'm not going to snap at you later on. (laughs) And so... It's, it's just an understanding of what is important to make you a whole person um, and so that you can do everything else that, that you need to. It's almost like we know there, there's some of us in, in the world that need a cup of coffee. Um, we absolutely have to have that cup of coffee in order to be uh, a sharper to uh, be happier, to say hello, to not bite people's heads off at work. And so the fitness, I think, is like that cup of coffee. It gets you more alert, and it doesn't mean that you have to go for two hours. It might be that it's, so if somebody in your family is, is ill and you're having to put more time to that or you have a huge project at work um, or something personal, you're going through a divorce or your, your kids are about to move out um, for college, and so things are really hectic. Maybe you're not in the gym for two hours. Maybe it's before you were working out three days a week for an hour and a half. Maybe you split it up into five days a week for 30 minutes. Um, And that's the flexibility part that Yuri and I discuss in the book, that in order to reach a goal, you must be flexible. You cannot be, uh, you, you have to be flexible. Um, and, and be willing to alter and change things. Um, it's like driving down the highway and changing lanes in order to get to your destination um, or taking a different path if one road is shut down. Um, you don't just throw your hands up and go, that's it, I'm not going. Um, you find other ways to get there, and it's the same thing in life when we're reaching our goals. 
you may have to change lanes. It may take you a little bit longer. You may have to take a different route. But if you're willing to do those things, then you're going to get there. And so when huge catastrophes come up or even small ones, if we remain flexible and we remain true to ourselves and we understand our motivation, then we're still going to be moving forward and not either stagnating or going backwards. I love that. That, that is so, um, you said that so beautifully. So thank you. It had me thinking a lot about, I, I always, I'm doing the all or nothing. It's either all mom or all me instead of a little bit of both. So, um, and women, women tend to be that way. I think women are more, we say yes to everything. We don't say no to anything. We take on way more because we are people pleasers. And we think, oh my gosh, if I don't do this, then it's going to hurt that person's feelings. Or I have to do this because they're not going to be able to do it themselves. We just have to let, let go of a few things and say it's okay. And I think that's something that women deal with a little bit differently than men do. Yeah, it's so funny. I can coach all of my clients on it because it's the biggest thing I struggle with. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and I'm sure the two of you have, have similar stories about that, that you're so great at what you both do because of things that you've struggled with, and you share it so beautifully in your book. Thank you. So I want to make sure, because a number of people have reached out and we're coming to the end of the show, how do people reach out to you? Jody? how does somebody get in touch with you? You may email me at jodylee at gmail.com. So it's J-O-D-I-L-E-I-G-H at gmail.com. Um, I'm on Instagram at Jody Lee. Um, and uh, so I'm also on Twitter um, at Jody Lee 2128. And I have a, a public Facebook page uh, that is uh, Jody Lee Pro Athlete. Um, but email, email is typically the, the best way. And just give me a couple days to, to respond. But I'm happy to answer questions. And definitely we want to hear what your thoughts are about the book and, and how it's helped uh, your life. And Yuri, how do people reach out to you? Uh, I'd like to, to say that the main, the one stop for um, contact is the www.readysetachievebook.com. There... Uh, you're going to see contact information and also uh, contact for seminar and things like that. I'm also on Twitter at Yuri Diogenes, um, easy to follow. Uh, but the website has all the links uh, for uh, to purchase the book, to get in contact, to see a sample of our uh, presentation that we deliver many times. Uh, so that's a, a good uh, website to go through. Are you guys going to be presenting in Florida anytime soon? Uh, if the opportunity comes, we definitely go. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we'd love to. Florida's probably warmer than even Texas right now. <laughs> uh, yes, it's actually quite lovely here today. Um, but, you know, I know you guys travel a lot. Uh, Yuri, you do a lot of presentations for Microsoft. And, and Jody, you're you're just always doing so many amazing things based on what I see on your, your social media. Last thought that... <laughs> each of you would like to share with the audience, my listeners. Yuri, uh, Jody, um, why don't you start? Uh, first of all, write things down. I know we're in an age of technology, but there's something very impersonal, impersonal about just typing things into a computer or on a phone. There's something that just doesn't beat handwriting. Uh, you know, brain to fingers through pen onto paper. It's something that you can post up, you can see it, you, um, it, it's more tactile. And so goals, to-do lists, motivations, uh, thoughts, um, it, journaling helps uh, you overcome a lot or understand a lot or, or reach some catharsis. So that is, that is a huge, huge thing that I think is important even in this world of, of advanced technology. Perfect. And now we go to our, our fellow geek, uh, Yuri. Last thought you'd like to share with everybody? Well, I think this show is uh, is amazing that it's coming so close to the end of the year because New Year's uh, resolutions is coming, right? Uh, everyone wants to make some change. So use this opportunity to reflect on what you want to change, what you want to achieve next year, and, and, and make sure that you plan 
uh, ahead uh, and, and pursue uh, your goal. It's, it's never really late to make change. Uh, I'll be 42 this Friday, and I'm feeling much better than I, when I was 32 uh, physically and mentally. So age is not really an excuse to not get things done. It's actually you are in much better uh, uh, mental health, uh, and uh, you can pursue uh, your dreams uh, regardless of your age. I'm, I'm pretty positive about that. Well, happy early birthday, Yuri. Thank you. <laughs> um, I'm excited to have had both of you on the show, and I'm actually kind of glad that we didn't have it in November because I think, as you said, it's perfect to be talking about your book, Ready, Set, Achieve, A Guide to Taking Charge of Your Life, Creating Balance, and Achieving Your Goals, available wherever books are sold, because we are coming into the end of the year, as you said. So um, I know that you've got me reflecting on a number of things that I want to achieve, and I'm going to be spending the next couple of weeks of the end of this year Think about what it is that I really want for me to happen and how I can do that and plan. I'm going to start planning my meals better. So Jonathan over at Relentless Dietetics, if you're listening, know that I am going to do that. <laughs> excellent. Excellent. Thank and I you. just want to take the time to thank you very much for having us at the show. I appreciate that. Oh, it's, it's truly yes, my honor. Thank you so much. Thank you, Yuri. Thank you. thank you, Jody, for being on the show today. And remember, everybody, the right questions truly can change your life. So what are you asking today? Have a great day, everyone. You've been listening to It's All About the Questions, starring Laura Stewart. Connect with Laura at itsallaboutthequestions.com and download a free workbook that will help you ask better questions starting today. 